everyone. So today we are going to be looking at the sheep eye here and we'll dissect it together and find all of the structures. So the first thing we want to do is kind of orient ourselves. So right here, this, this would be the front of the eye, the anterior part. And so that would be the cornea right there. What color is the cornea in real life? Is it usually this milky cloudy white color? No, usually it's clear, and so the only reason it is not clear is because of the preservative. It kind of makes everything darker and cloudier. So in real life, the cornea would be nice and clear because the light has to pass through it, like the window. I think of it as like the window for the eye. And then the cornea is going to come here and see this white part? This is the sclera. Okay, so the tough outermost part is the sclera. We also have a membrane that kind of covers the anterior part of the eye, and that is going to be the conjunctiva. So if you ever had uh, conjunctivitis, which is pink eye, that's, that's just inflammation of the conjunctiva, that membrane there. Okay, working our way towards the back. In the back here, we're gonna see a lot of fat probably. So anytime you see kind of lumpy white stuff, all of that is fat, and so we want to remove a little bit of that fat because I want to try to expose more of the optic nerve, which is this little structure right here. Okay, so that's where the visual information would leave the eye and travel through to the brain. Okay, so from optic nerve to optic chiasma to optic tract and then into the brain. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and try to get some of this fat off. We don't need to remove every single piece of fat, but we want to remove some of it. Now, you don't want to just go cutting things because the other thing that I want to try to find is some of the extrinsic eye muscles. So when, so you really want to focus on understanding and looking for differences in texture. The, uh, the fat, the loose adipose connective tissue, that is going to be um, really kind of dispersed and, like I said, kind of lumpy. If you see structures that have a distinctive kind of striped kind of appearance or it feels textured in a different way, that is going to be the extrinsic eye muscle and we want to try to keep that if we can. Okay, so I see some of it right there. I'm gonna try to pull off the fat without pulling off. So, look, so think of it like steak, right? If you see something that looks like steak, that is muscle, okay? Meat is muscle. So what I'm doing right now, I'm doing my stick and spread. It's very small, hard to hold on to, but I'll do my best. Okay, so I'm just kind of spreading it apart to make sure there's nothing in it. Okay, so before you do any kind of cutting off, you wanna make sure that there's nothing inside of it. Okay, and once you're really sure that there's no muscles hiding in it, then you can go ahead and cut it off. So just sort of spread it apart, tease it apart first. And you can see there's my muscle that looks like one of the oblique muscles. Okay, so try to remove some of it. And again, you don't have to get it all the way 100% clean. It's a, you know, kind of a lot of fat there. So just try to get enough so that you can at the very least see one of those extrinsic eye muscles clearly and that you are able to find the optic nerve. There it is. There, got a nice, got a nice optic nerve on there. A little bit squished, but not too bad. I'm gonna switch to these and just sort of peel it off. Okay, so you can see these kind of tan structures with the very distinctive fascicles, right? So you can see the fascicles that makes it look striped, like muscle, like you think looking at carne asada. <laughs> That is the extrinsic eye muscles. You have the rectus extrinsic eye muscles and then the oblique. Okay, there we go, that's good enough. 
So again, it doesn't have to be 100% clean, just enough so that you can definitely clearly see extrinsic eye muscles. See, again, kind of the tannish color here. Extrinsic eye muscles, I can see the sclera underneath it. And then here, this one looks like an oblique. And then got kind of like all those extrinsic eye muscles coming out. And then we have a very distinctive optic nerve exiting from the very back of the eye. It's going to take good information to the brain. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut into it. And because the eye is so small and round and hard to hold on to, you're going to need to be very careful with this. So just as a reminder, whenever you are cutting, use your octopus hands. Okay, so <laughs> that's what I learned when I was little. Okay, if you're cutting, you want to keep your fingers out of the way. Try to hold them in, bite close tight to each other, and always, always cut towards the tray. Hold the specimen on the tray. Do not cut in your hands ever. Okay, so hold it nice and thin, and you're gonna just pierce it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, a hole with, this, with the scalpel right here. So we wanna cut maybe about a fourth of an inch or so, maybe half a centimeter, and cut all the way around the cornea. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the anterior segment and just kind of pop it off. So we'll have kind of two pieces, the anterior segment and the posterior segment behind it. And then we can look at all those internal structures. Okay, so pierce it and then switch to scissors. Okay, careful when I do this, there might be some liquid coming out because that is the vitreous humor. Vitreous humor. Okay. Oh, my, not very sharp. Should be able to just poke it in. Oh, there we go. See all that liquid coming out? That's the vitreous humor. I'm going to switch into scissors so I have more control. Don't try to cut with your scalpel. It doesn't have enough control. And you're just going to cut in a circle all the way around so that you have two separate pieces. Okay. So I got my anterior segment and my posterior segment separate and I'll make a separate videos and go over the structures.